It's just hugely exciting for our small satellite experimentation team that on the, the 18th of November in 2017, we launched the first satellite that DST and its forerunners have launched since 1967. So a gap, yeah, like 50 years ago. So that was just a huge milestone and, and very, very exciting for our team. And a, I think a, a great step forward for DST and for Defence as well. Of course, one of the things that we had to do as part of the Buccaneer program was to demonstrate to NASA that our little miniature satellite was suitable for launch on the Delta II. We were able to demonstrate full compliance with all of their requirements. T minus six, five, four, three, two, engine start, one, and liftoff of Delta II and NOAA's Joint Polar Satellite System One. The current on-orbit Buccaneer is like a pathfinder for a future launch of a second Buccaneer. So what we'll do is we'll use the digital high-frequency receiver with its associated three-meter-long antenna in a cross shape. We'll use that to capture signals transmitted by JORN, a ground-based radar system that is crucial to our defense of Australia. So the satellite will be way out in the far field of the, of the JORN transmitting arrays. So we'll capture those signals, we'll digitize them on the satellite, and then those digitized signals will transmit them down to, down to our ground segment. And so the equation is that we've got a, a very, very, very inexpensive little CubeSat contributing to, to the refinement in the performance of a ground-based radar system that is worth billions of dollars. Our partners at the University of New South Wales, Canberra, put a little low resolution camera in the, in the CubeSat. And so we've been able to use that to take photos of the deployed high frequency antenna. And over a period of a number of, a couple of months now, we've seen that the high frequency antenna is always in the right position in the camera field of view. So not only has it deployed successfully, but it's maintained its cross-shaped cross structure and it hasn't collapsed. So that's been a very successful demonstration for us. You can't learn or gain a really deep understanding of, of satellite operations from reading a book. I mean, unless we've got people doing it, um, you know, we're not going to get where we need to be because these are going to be the folks that we turn to uh, for advice in the future. And, and Defence needs to make sure that its experts have, haven't just learned about it, they've done it, they really, truly, deeply get it and can give us what we need um, as we move forward. It's very crucial to us to have missions that have real capability or demonstrate real capability for Australian defence. And so currently we are thinking about, you know, what uh, once we've done Buccaneer and we've achieved that mission for JORN, what other, other missions are, are out there that we could um, undertake to, that you know, will have real benefit for Australian defence? The way in which DST wants to do its business in the future is to work very closely with partners in academia, Australian academia and Australian industry and that's certainly no different in the small satellite experimentation domain. We're very keen to partner with, with uh, other players in Australia. We want to make sure that we're engaging with the evolving ecosystem for small space or small, small satellite, satellite domain in Australia. So that includes academia, the startups and in, in doing that we're also reaching out and working with our international partners as well in the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, New Zealand and other countries as well.